everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a mix of a chit chat video and a paint with me. I'll be painting on this Louis Vuitton dupe that I've had laying around my house for a while. With Chinese New Year coming up on February 1st, I wanted to dedicate this video to honor the Year of the Tiger and talk about being a Chinese adoptee, the realities of it, and finding love for my culture. I grew up with a lot of ignorant things said to me from both children and adults, and now that I'm older, I do realize a lot of the comments that were made weren't meant to hurt me most of the time. They were said because of the lack of education that exists around adoption. So as I've come to be more open, I want to use this platform to share my story and just overall open the discussion about adoption from an adoptee's point of view. I was born in 1998 and abandoned at a storefront with a red note that read, Save this poor girl with my date of birth and time I was born. I spent the next couple months in an orphanage before ending up in foster care. And then in 2001, an Italian-American couple came to adopt me and brought me to my new home in New Jersey. From the start of my childhood, my parents made the effort to remind me of my culture, which looking back, I'm really grateful for because a lot of other transracial adoptees didn't have that experience. I was enrolled in Chinese dance classes with other Chinese adoptees, Chinese calligraphy and paper cutting, and Saturday Chinese school, but that one only lasted for a day. I ended up taking private Mandarin lessons instead. However, I still longed to be accepted into the American lifestyle. I remember being in first grade and asking my mom to pack me an American lunchbox in a brown paper bag, which I was very, very specific about, and I told her not to give me my Hello Kitty lunchbox. Soon after, I was replacing Chinese dance with cheerleading and telling people my middle name was Michelle instead of Xiaofen. I think at this time is when I started to face the reality of being adopted. I was having feelings I didn't understand. I was very angry when I was in middle school and high school without even really knowing why I was so angry. Being 23 and having gone to therapy where I discussed my adoption and learned more about my childhood trauma, I realized that at that time I was really struggling with finding my identity. I grew up in a very Italian area. My family's Italian, so I understood Italian culture, the jokes, the accents, the food, but my face is Chinese, so I never felt like I belonged, but I desperately wanted to. I was usually the token Asian in my friend group and I didn't relate to my Asian peers because I was too whitewashed. I still struggle with my identity today, but in a different way. Instead of trying to find my place with white people and play the token Asian, I'm now trying to find my identity outside of what I've always known. Struggling with your identity is just one of the effects of being adopted. There is abandonment issues, difficulties, forming emotional attachments, low self-esteem, and so on. The discussion of the trauma that adopted children face as they grow up is kind of overshadowed by the glamorization of adoption, which is seeing it as this noble act where the adopted child should be grateful they were saved. And viewing adoption this way actually hurts adoptees because it holds them back from speaking openly about their experiences and pain because they're made to feel like they have to be grateful and only show that gratitude. Of course, I am so thankful for the life that I am living but I want to make it clear that my life is not better because someone adopted me. My life is just different than it could have been. It's taken me so long to become so open about the discussion of adoption and specifically my own. I used to hide this about myself because I was embarrassed and I wanted to fit in like everyone else. I used to purposefully like tell my parents not to come to things because I didn't want people to see me with them and you know connect the dots. and have to have that conversation about adoption because it was something that made me very uncomfortable. But the first time I began feeling comfortable in my own skin and embracing my unique life story was winter term of my freshman year in college. Before class began, my professor had been talking with a couple of students about the best place she's ever visited and she had said China. So that caught my interest right away and I just was kind of eavesdropping on the conversation. And the more she talked about it, the more intrigued I became. And in that moment, I texted my dad and said, I want to go to China this summer. We toured six different cities throughout China, including Beijing, Xi'an, Guangzhou, Nanchang, Jingdezhen, and Shanghai. However, out of all the cities, Jingdezhen meant the most to me because it's the city I was born in. When we arrived in Jingdezhen, I was given a tour of my early years of life before I was adopted and brought to America. I had the chance to meet the director and staff members of the orphanage that I was in, along with one of my caregivers, who was the last to see me before handing me off to my parents in Nanchang. He had said that I still looked the same, <laughs> which 
I don't know. I feel like after, I think I went at, when I was 19, so I feel like after 17 years, I looked a little different. But I learned the location of my finding and the story behind it that came with the letter from my biological parents, which I didn't know existed until I met with the director. And then we ended my tour with a traditional Jingdetsen meal shared with my parents, caregiver, and the director and staff members of the orphanage. Learning about this part of my life was a mix of many emotions, but mostly gratefulness for the people who took care of me when I was young and worked so hard to find me the perfect family. Since that moment, I've learned a lot about myself and adoption as a whole. People used to ask me if I was angry at my birth mom for giving me up, and I never usually had an answer for it. I think part of that was because I was really young and there probably was some part of me deep inside that was angry and did have resentment and I just didn't like I just didn't consciously know it but it was in my subconscious but now that I'm older and I've done a lot of self-work and learned more about my adoption and accepted my story I can confidently say that I'm not mad at my birth mother and I could not imagine being mad at her I want to bring that to light especially because people outside of China view these mothers as evil and heartless, saying I could never give up my child, how could a mother do that to their own? But you don't know until you're in their position and it is a privilege to be able to never have to experience that. There's so much pain that these mothers go through and how it wasn't an easy decision to make, but under the circumstances they had no choice. I really recommend watching Found on Netflix, which is a documentary that follows three Chinese adoptees on their journey back to China to find their birth parents. And you really learn a lot about the statistics of the young girls that were given up for adoption and you get to see the parents who did give up their daughters and you get to see their emotions, their tears, and even explain why they had to do it. One of the fathers said that it was either they pay $8,000 to keep their daughter or they give her up for adoption and the living circumstances that they had, it would, it would be almost impossible to be able to pay that fee. So as a result, they had no choice. And I don't think a lot of people, especially in America, realize that they don't have the luxury that we have here. But overall, this documentary was so eye-opening, even for someone who has experienced what these girls are going through, and I highly, highly, highly recommend that you watch it too. Today, I'm taking the steps to learn my history, and for the past several months, I've been taking Mandarin lessons in hopes to one day go back to China and find my birth parents. I think it'd be great to even just be able to speak my mother tongue in China, or even Chinatown. I'm specifically really excited for this year's Chinese New Year because I've never actually celebrated it. Um, my mom has always tried to encourage me to want to ever since I was little and every year I always said no, I don't want to celebrate it. No, no, no. And this year I finally said to her I want to celebrate Chinese New Year and we'll order a bunch of Chinese food, everyone will, will wear red, we'll decorate and it'll be really fun. So this is going to be my first year celebrating and I think it's just going to be a really fun time. So this video is dedicated to both my parents because they've never had to love me like I was their own because I am their own. So this is the final purse and I'm really impressed with how it came out, especially because when I was first sketching this with the white paint, I was thinking in my head, I don't know if I can do this. I think I might be too far ahead of myself. But I pulled through in the end, and I really trusted the process, and I'm glad I did. Thank you guys for watching the entire painting process, even though sometimes that can get a little boring and you just want to get to the end. But I hope you enjoyed everything that I had to say, and you gained some new perspective on the realities of being adopted, and got to also know me more as a person. I will see you guys next video. Bye!